Hi, I'm Dr. Sunil Richardson, maxillofacial and craniofacial surgeon. I practice both out of South India and also out of the Middle East. Haven't been to the Middle East for a while now since this pandemic. But right now I'm at Richardson's in South India in the state of Tamil Nadu. We have this brave boy with us. What we're going to do is underbite correction. He's just turning 12, but because he had cleft, his upper jaw hasn't grown as much as it should have. And therefore, he has what is technically called as maxillary hypoplasia. Maxilla refers to the upper jaw. Hypoplasia refers to hypo less plasia growth, less growth of the upper jaw, or in other layman term, which is called underbite, or a condition where the lower jaw is over the upper jaw, right? So let me show you how he looks. I also want to tell you how Kalida, that's a bite, you see? That's what we say under bite. His lower jaw is ahead of the upper jaw. Kadima? Right. So what's the plan? We're gonna get the upper jaw forwards and a little bit downwards, but mainly forwards, right? And I'm gonna show you the appliance he's wearing inside. My brother, look at that appliance. So that's um that's an appliance that we fabricated here. That's a tooth bone custom made intraoral anterior maxillary distractor. Okay, now this distractor, after it's placed, so I will do a surgery in the upper jaw. We will segmentalize the upper jaw from the nose and then split it inside through the palate inside in the palate and then stretch the upper jaw outwards this is called as anterior maxillary distraction this is simply the best way to correct maxillary hypoplasia or underbite especially for cleft patients because the speech improves with this a lot of cleft patients have good speech those that we do have excellent speech here, but this guy had his palate done in swear. I've done a lip revision for him some months ago. But what I'm trying to say is, with the technique of anterior maxillary distraction, the only thing that can happen is improvement in speech. It doesn't get worsened. Conventional orthognathics for this kind of a patient can affect in the speech adversely. Secondly, this is a technique where you create new bone, no relapse, and therefore it's the best. And lastly, and most importantly, they don't have to wait till they're 15 or 16. As I said, he's just turning 12, and we can solve this problem as early as that. So gone are the days when you have to wait till all the bones have to mature. Gone are the days when you have to wear a distractor around the head like a halo. This technique, more than 10, 15 papers. So we've got a team ready for this. It's not just me that we can do this. We need to have an orthodontist and a dentist who are really trained to do patients with anterior maxillary distraction, for anterior maxillary distraction. And the beauty is, these people can then go off to school even. There's no school now, but if there was a school, they could go to school. It's going to be very little pain, plus they can chew for a while, chew after a while with the appliance inside. So, why don't you buy it, brother? Right, so he's all ready for surgery. We're planning him this evening to do the distraction. It's probably going to take me about an hour at most. We're going to get the upper jaw. And also I'm going to work a little bit in the nasal base as it gives me opportunity to open that part of his skeleton and that part of the muscle. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to ask him if his father has told him anything about the surgery and his father hasn't told him anything. Anyway, so that's gonna be we just told him it's gonna hurt him a little bit. But he's a brilliant guy. He's in standard seven, seventh grade. Okay. Right. Injection number four chilla? Nila photo kangla, I put it. Okay. Chilla. Thank you.
This guy is just 12 years old. So we're going to do a distraction. Get him some new bones in the upper jaw to correct this underbite. The plan is to get the upper jaw forward by 12 millimeters eventually. So we've already fabricated a custom made device. A uh, dental surgeon or not, so shielded inside the wow. The patient is all draped and ready. Check the tractor. So yeah, he doesn't look like he has a great retrusion, but he does have a minimal retrusion. And so we're gonna advance the upper jaw. This is a fabulous technique because it doesn't cause issues for the patients. And you have to remember that one technique doesn't suit all patients. The technique has to be modified, altered, changed, depending on the age and what needs to be done. So we expose this maxilla now. I'm doing a jaw surgery. I'm gonna show you some of the anatomical landmarks that you need to see when you're doing a procedure like this. That's the infobital nerve coming, around, coming out of the canal. This is the pyriform rim on the normal side. Anterior nasal spine, I've detached the septal attachment right there. Then you can see this is the cleft side pyriform rim. It's grafted here, so it's kind of in one piece. But you can still see there's a slight width increase in the shape of the pyriform rim. I'm going to show you the infrabital nerve on this side. There it is. Infrabital nerve on the left side. And then we can let go of that once. And then and you can see the distractor. The intra or tooth bone distractor. That's going to help us advance the upper jaw and get new bone. I've got the nasal osteotomy all the way back, all the way back. The mucosa are detached and free. Hardly any ooze now. I've got the distractor inside. Now I'm going to try and move the distractor and show you how the segment is going to come forward. You can take this out now for a while. And give me the actuator, the tongue depressor. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to move. You observe the gap here. This area and this area. You're going to see how the gap is going to come. The first turn. I'll move maybe six times till you can appreciate the gap. And then can you see the gap now? I don't know if you can see the gap. Stop. Go down. Is that good? Yeah. So you see this gap? It's very evident now. There's a gap that's forming there also. So we're going to distract this patient forward by 12 millimeters in that region which I'm showing you now between the second premolar and the first molar and the beauty of this technique is after a while the body deposits new bone there so it can be nothing better than that so whatever growth the patient hasn't had because of the surgical reason or because of the reason of clefting is going to be simply overcome by the patient itself. I'm going to show you here again how it's all dry. So I wait till it's dry. Thank you.